Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to analyze arguments using truth tables. And we should note that when we're analyzing arguments in this video, we're already going to be given them in the PQ form, so it's already going to be in logic form. Um, so just looking at those to analyze truth tables. Let's talk more about this. So how do we determine the validity of an argument using truth tables? Here's my step-by-step -step suggestions. Step one, write the argument as a conditional statement. And we'll talk more about that on the next slide. Step two, set up a truth table similar to the following. So we've done truth tables before. We always start with the simple statements. So that's PQ, PQR, whatever we have. Then we talk about any negations, then any compound statements we might have. And for arguments, we're gonna have one final column. And our final column is gonna be a, a conditional statement. So if then, and the if part, the hypothesis, is a conjunction of all of premises. So it'll be premise one and premise two and premise three, blah, blah, blah. And then the conclusion is the conclusion. Uh, when it's in this form, when we're using an argument, we see the, it looks like a conditional, but it has like a double sign. We call that the implication. And um, that's just the, what we use for arguments rather than just using the, that single arrow. So if all truth values under the implication are trues, i.e. a tautology, then the argument is valid, otherwise it is invalid. So we must have a tautology in that final column in order for the argument to be valid. And just a side note, so the one thing that I didn't include in my brilliant example is that the column right before the final column will be the conjunction of the premises, so you're setting up your hypothesis for this final uh, column. So you would have premise one and premise two and premise three, whatever, however many premises there are, you would need a column for that. Then you would have the final column, which is that this here is the hypothesis leading to that conclusion. Okay, let's talk more about step one. So step one, we use a conjunction between the premises and the implication for the conclusion. The notation for implication is this thing, right? It's like a conditional. Um, we just use two instead of one. And one other thing that we'll see when we're setting these up is that we're gonna see this triple dot thing and the, the way we read that is therefore. That, that's all it means, it just means therefore. That always comes before the conclusion. So you'll always see the conclusion because you'll have that therefore right in front of it. Okay, let's look at some examples. We wanna decide whether this argument is valid or not. So remember, it's valid if that final column, if that implication is a tautology. Looking at this, we have two premises. Here's premise one. Here's premise two, and here's our conclusion. Now, I put a bunch of columns here. Let's make sure that we agree with the number that I chose. So we need P, we need Q. We need not P, we need not Q. We need not P, then Q, premise one. We need a conjunction of the premises, and we need the conjunction of the premises leading to the conclusion. So of course I didn't use my counting off by fives. Brilliant, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's see, we have P, Q, not P, not Q, not P, then Q. And I tend to write these final two columns in one of two ways. Um, just because usually these things are too long and my columns don't have as much width as I can allow, I usually just say P1 and P2 for this one, just the conjunction of the premises. And then for this one I would say P1 and P2, we'll put it in parentheses therefore the conclusion, um, or you would just actually write them out using parentheses. So not P, then Q is premise one, and premise two, not Q. Then here we would have not P, then Q, and not Q, leading to our conclusion of P. So you can write it either way, it doesn't matter. Well, I don't know, check with your person, your instructor, to see if it does matter. Okay, now let's fill this in. I've already filled in P and Q for us, that was so nice. Not P has the opposite truth value of P, so that's false, false, true, true. Not Q has the opposite truth value of Q, so that'll be false, true, false, true. For this column here, not P then Q, so this is a conditional. We need either the hypothesis to be false or the conclusion to be true or both. So let's see, false, okay, since we have a false hypothesis, it doesn't matter what Q is. We have a false hypothesis, so that's a true conditional. Okay, for the last two we have trues, so we need to check this, so if true, then true, that's good, that's true. And then lastly, if true, then false, that's no good, that's gonna give us a false in this column. Okay, so now we're looking at, here's P1, and here's P2, they're right next to each other, that's great. 
Uh, in order for this conjunction to be true, they both must be true. So we have true and false is false. True and true is true. True and false is false. False and true is false. And now for our final column, this is now the hypothesis of our final conclusion, or our final statement here. So this is the hypothesis, and the conclusion is over here. And now we're ready. So remember, this is a conditional statement. So we either need the hypothesis to be false or the conclusion to be true or both. So if we have an if false, that means that that conditional or the implication is true. Here, the second one, we have if true, then true. That would be true. If false, it doesn't matter what's after that, it's gonna be true, and if false is gonna be true. So now, is this argument valid or not? Well, the final column here ended up being all trues, that's a tautology, that indicates we have a valid argument. So this argument is valid, yay, valid argument. And that would be our first example of deciding whether an argument is valid or not using a truth table. Let's look at another one. All right, it's getting a little more complex. We have P or Q, not P and not Q. Those are our premises, so here's premise one, and here's premise two, and our conclusion is down here. And it's not always the case that the conclusion is P, this just is a coincidence here. Okay, so what do we need? Well, we're gonna need four rows because we have two simple statements, P and Q. How many columns do we need? We need one for P, one for Q, not P, not Q, P or Q, not P and not Q, the conjunction of the premises, and the final implication. So it looks like we're gonna need eight columns in total. And now that I kind of went through it, I do encourage you to pause the video, construct your truth table, and see if yours matches mine. And then you can tell me if the argument is valid or not. How'd you do? Was it valid? Was it not? Let's find out. Okay, so here's my table. I have my P and Q all set up. I need not P and not Q. Then I need premise one, so I'm just gonna label it. Premise one is P or Q. Premise two, not P and not Q. This is the conjunction of the premises, so this is, you can either say P1 and P2, or you would say P or Q and not P and not Q. And then we need the conjunction of the premises implicating our conclusion which we'll call, whoops, sorry, which we'll call C. Or you can write it P or Q and not P and not Q, therefore P, whichever way you want. Okay, so not P, that's gonna have the opposite truth value of P, so that will be false, false, true, true. Not Q will be false, true, false, true. P or Q, premise one, so in order for a disjunction to be true, we need one or the other, so we need at least one true. So we have true or true, that's true. True or false is a true disjunction. False or true is true. False or false would be false. Premise two, this is not P and not Q. This is a conjunction. In order for a conjunction to be true, we need both simple statement or both statements to be true. So we have false and false, that's not good. That's, oh, and I put true, <laughs> that's false. We have false and true. Nope, that's no good, that's false. True and false, still false. True and true, yay, we have a true, is true. Okay, now we're looking at the conjunction of the premises. So the conjunction, again, we need them both to be true in order for the conjunction to be true. Those are the two columns we're looking at. Let's get started, true and false, nope. True and false, nope. True and false, nope. False and true, nope. Then over here, we're looking at our final implication. So we have premise one and premise two, that's this column here, and our conclusion P over here. So again, I'll highlight these just so that we don't have to look very far. Okay, and actually looking at this, right, we need the implication, so either the hypothesis is false, which we see in every single one, right? We only have falses here, which means all of these are going to be trues, because if the hypothesis is false, then the conditional statement is true. So we again end up with a tautology, and this argument was valid, another valid argument. Yay, us. All right, that was example two. Let's look at one more example. Here's our third example, and again, please pause the video, try it on your own, see what you come up with, check back with me. 
Now for this one, how many rows did you need? There were three simple statements. There's P, Q, and R. So we needed eight rows beneath the headers. Eight rows this time, so a little bit different than last time. How many columns do we need? Well, we need P, Q, R. We need not P and not R. Then we have premise one, premise two. Pre uh, the conclusion is its own column this time. Then we need the conjunction of the premises. And lastly, we need the implication of the premises leading to the conclusion. So it looks like we're going to need 10 columns this time. Is that what you came up with? I hope so. OK, there's my 10 columns. Aren't they beautiful? So again, we have the three simple statements, P, Q, and R. Then we have our negations, not P and not R. We don't need not Q because we don't see it anywhere. Then we have, here's premise one, premise two, the conclusion, the conjunction of the premises, and then the final implication. And so first we want to start with our simple statements, filling those in. And again, we want to make sure we hit all eight different combinations of trues and falses for P, Q, and R. So here I did it for you, or I did it for myself anyway. And I'm just going to relabel these. Here's premise one. Here's premise two. Here's our conclusion. So we have four trues followed by four falses for P. For Q, I alternated true, true, false, false. And then for R, I just alternated true, false, true, false. So that gives me eight unique combinations of trues and falses for P, Q, and R, right? If you decided what I've seen students do before is they just make R false, false, true, true, false, false, true, true. But that's just the opposite of Q. That's actually just the negation of Q. We're not getting all eight unique combinations of trues and falses. So that's why I just, I stick with my plan and I just don't alter, I don't sway from it because this is what works for me. You need to find what works for you. Okay, so not P, that's gonna have the opposite truth value of P. So that's gonna be false, 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 true, 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 true. Not R will have the opposite truth value from R, so it's going to be false, true. It's going to alternate false and true, right? And I should end on a true. Oh, good, I did. Not P or Q, so here's premise one. Not P or Q, this is a disjunction. We need one or both to be true. So not P is right here. Q is right here, so we have false or true is true. Not P, false or true is true. And I always like highlighting so that way I don't get confused because it's really easy, right, to just see the wrong thing and then it all be wrong, which would be really frustrating. So I always recommend highlighters or, or something. But in this case, I'm just going to be really careful. Okay, we have false or false, which is false. False or false is false. True or true is true. True or true, true. True or false is true. True or false is true. For premise two, we have if, P, then R. So that's a conditional statement for a conditional to be true. Either the hypothesis P is false or the conclusion R is true or both. So here we have true, then true. That's going to be a true conditional. A true hypothesis leading to a false conclusion. That's no good. That's false. True, then true is true. If true, then false. Again, that's no good. If false, so the next four, we have four false hypotheses. So those are all going to be true conditional statements. Okay, and then we have our conclusion, P or not R. So, uh, sorry, P and not R. Let's try that again, P and not R. That's a conjunction. In order for a conjunction to be true, we need both statements to be true. So that has to be true and true. If it's not that, then it's false. So we have true and false. Whoops, that's gonna be false. True and, where are we, not R. True, that's good, that's true. True and false is false. True and true is true. Then we have false and false is false. False and true is false. False and false is false. False and true is false. Okay, now we're going to look at the conjunction of the premises. So again, this is a conjunction. In order for it to be true, we need true and true. Here we go. True and true is true. True and false is false. False and true is no good. False and false is no good. True and true is true. True and true is true. True and true is true. We have a lot of trues down here. True and true is true. And then finally, we have the conjunction of the premises, which is just this right here. And we have the conclusion, which is this right here. Since there are two columns next to each other, I'm not going to highlight them, but of course you can if that helps. So what we need here is we need either the 
hypothesis, the conjunction of the premises to be false or the conclusion to be true. Let's see, we have if true, then false. Whoops, we're not starting off not starting off good. In fact, we don't even need to fill in the table, which we will, but we don't have to. Because we have one single false, this argument is no good. But let's continue. We have if false, that's going to be a true conditional. If false is true, if false is going to be true. Okay, here we have if true, then false. Eek. If true, then false. Oh, no. If true, then false is false. If true, then false is false. So, wow, this one is badly invalid. This argument is no good. So we do not get that we have a true conclusion no matter what with these two premises in this conclusion. These have been examples of determining the validity of arguments using truth tables. Thank you for stopping by.